What is up guys? Eric from AndroidSyndicate.com here, back with a brand new video. In this one, we're going to be going over Square's Retrofit. They refer to it as a type safe HTTP client for Android and Java. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the interface, how to actually use the Retrofit object. And we're going to be doing this with something called the Movie Database. And we're going to be employing that in an Android app. So let's go check out the movie database. You can go here right to themoviedatabase.org. And the first thing you're gonna have to do is sign up and make an account, it's totally free, and receive an API key. So I've already done that, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And we're gonna go over to our account settings. And once you've logged in, you'll instantly receive your API key. But down here by API, we'll see our API key. So that's the first thing we have to do. So let's go ahead and fire up a new project. We'll call it retrofit example. I'm gonna make an empty activity. First things first, we're gonna to want to create a new class and this is going to be the interface that our API is gonna interact with. Now that we have our API class, let's go ahead into our build.gradle and let's add some dependencies that we'll need. In this project, we're going to be using three dependencies. We're going to be using the retrofit, we're going to be using JSON converter, and JSON. Now retrofit comes with a great thing called H OK HTTP built in, so we won't actually have to build that. It comes packaged with that. So now we're going to go ahead and sync up our project. And let's head back over to our interface. Now in our interface, we're gonna have to use some annotations. Most commonly used one is override, but we're gonna be using get. And if you don't know about annotations, you can look up HTTP annotations. And you can see them right here. There's different ones such as get path, or at path, at post, but we're going to be using just at get, but you can actually send information along with using things like put or delete and various others. So go ahead and check out this on the Oracle website. But let's head back over to the movie DB, and here we're going to be using the API call, and we need to figure out what URL we're going to form. So in order to do that, we're going to head over to API here at the top. And then we're going to go to the developers page. And in this one, we're going to be going over how to get the popular movies. So if you go down here to get popular, this will send you the first page of popular movies. And what you can actually do, it's really interesting, is you can get your API key and you can paste it right here. You could go to try it out and then insert your API key and then you can send the request and you'll see the JSON formatted results. And you'll also see here the full URL that we're going to form. So let's go ahead by start starting to form the URL. First, we're going to take the base URL right here, and we're going to make that a constant in our main activity. Okay, so now we know what we're aiming for. We're going to need a couple paths here. We're going to need the three movie popular and then some queries. So let's see how we'd make that in our retrofit interface. So we'd start out by saying get, and this is where you'd enter the relative path. Now you could enter the full path, but it's not the best practice to do that. So let's go ahead, and if we look here, let's just copy the full URL so we have it for reference while we're creating it. So we have our base URL already. So we're gonna have three, movie 
popular. And what you could do even is insert some braces here and you could say what category we want and then we'll be able to implement different categories so let's say we wanted the top rated or upcoming we could just enter that instead so it makes it so we can use this call for many different things so now we're gonna actually declare what we're gonna get and we're gonna say it's a call of type movie results and this is the part that really confused me was this whole call here so what call means is that it's going to do it asynchronously meaning that it won't jam up it won't do it on the main UI thread so it won't clog up and move slowly so we'll talk about what this movie results is in a minute here and now you just get a name the method so it's going to be we'll just say get movies and inside these parentheses here, we're going to append some paths. And we do that with more annotations. We'd say we're going to have to import some stuff here. So what you say here is at path, and we have category, which matches the category here. And then we'll have the value, which is going to be a string and we'll just call it category. So now looking back down here, we have movie, our category. Now it's time to append some queries. And here we're going to say API key. And that's going to be a string. And we'll just say API key. So now we don't have to put anything up here in our get statement. It'll automatically just append these queries. Now we can see our API key here is fine. Let's go ahead and add our next query, which is going to be a language. And the last query right here is going to be a page. So at this point here, I made a slight error with my syntax. The string values should be the one in parentheses not the entire statement after the at path and at query annotations. I also forgot to define this as an interface instead of a class, which I'll fix shortly. Okay, so this is going to actually build our URL that we have here. And we're gonna make a call that'll pass in these values later on. But right now, we need to go ahead and make our movie results class. So let's go ahead and start by making a new class. And another great thing that I really like about the movie DB is it gives you an idea of the network call here and what's going to be received by the JSON. So what we can do is just copy all of this here. And there's two ways we could do it. There's this great website called JSON Schema to Pojo. And if you don't know what a Pojo is, it's a plain old Java object. And what you can do is just paste in your JSON here we're going to select converting it to JSON because that's what Retrofit uses. The source is JSON. And there's a lot of great features over here that you can add, such as make parcelable or make serializable and to string. So you can check these if you want. And you can click preview. And that will go ahead and create these classes for us. And you can also over here type in the package name in the example. So this is one way of doing it. I really like it for these extra features here. I think an even simpler way is to generate some code. And there's a plugin that you can download called JSON Format, which I already have installed. So we could go to JSON Format. And again, we can just type in our JSON data here. And it will create everything that we need. So this is done already. It does everything for us. So now it's going to know what our movie results is. And I forgot to change the class here. It actually is an interface. So now we're all set. 
this is what's going to build our URL and make the connection. So let's go ahead and to go to our main activity. And this is when we're going to start using the retrofit object. And if you have any questions about that, it shows pretty simply here how to make a retrofit object. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to create a new retrofit builder object and we're going to start adding some paths here. So we're going to add our base, we're going to call base URL, pass in our base URL. And we're going to build it. So now this built our new retrofit object with our base URL. Another important thing to add is a JSON converter factory. And we're going to want to create that factory. So this is going to take our JSON data and convert it into JSON. Okay, so now that we have our retrofit object with our base URL, that's going to convert our JSON data to JSON and we built it. It's time to actually start making the call. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an instance of our API interface and we're going to use our retrofit object and we're going to say create. And we're going to go ahead and pass in our API interface class. Okay, now that we have all that, it's time to actually make a call object so we can make the network call. And here is where we're going to use our interface that we made. So we have our list of movies method right here, and we have all these different categories. So we're going to start using this now. First things first, we probably want to create some constants so that way there's no, it's going to be type safe. So let's start by doing that. We're going to add one for language, page, and our API key. Okay, so now that we have all the constants that we need, let's go ahead and start building our URL out. And we can do that simply by using the interface that we made. We're going to call our list of movie objects and it's going to want all the data that it expects. So first it wants our category, which let's go ahead and add that here. So now this list of movies method is going to return a call for us. And the call is actually what is going to asynchronously do the networking for us and get our JSON data and then convert it to JSON so that way we can use it. And so the part that confused me when I was first learning about this was this whole call and movie results thing. So the movie results is going to be the class that we created here. And if you look at our JSON data, you can see here, if we look at the JSON Explorer, we see that there's a root here. And then inside the root, it's nested the actual results. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to say, okay, get us the root and then get the results. And then we can get each one of these items in here. Like for instance, it's a uh, Beauty and the Beast is the first one. So we're going to create the details. Our movie results object is going to have a list of results in it. So we're going to have to use the movie results to get the list of results, which the JSON formatter creates as results beans. And we can see that that is a inner class here. So this is going to be each of the results that we want in a list. So hopefully, that makes a little sense. But let's go ahead and use our call to make the network call. We're going to use in queue and we're going to add in a callback. We're going to make a new callback of type movie results. And this is actually what's going to be making the network call. So this is similar to an asynchronous task, but you don't have to make your own inner class. The great thing about retrofit is it handles all this stuff for us. So now what we receive back is what we want. We get response of type movie results, 
which is our move results class here, and that's called response. And we can use this response, and we're going to get the body of it. And getting the body of it returns a movie result object here, which is our class. So let's create a new movie result. And now that we have our movie results, we can get the results of the movie inside. So we can get the list. We're going to get the results here, which pass a list of each of the results. So going back to our JSON Explorer, this root here, so this is going to be our movie results. So we're going to say get the movie results, and then we're going to say get the movie results, which is going to be this list here. And it's going to include all of our movies. I think it would be better to call this maybe get movie details, but either way. So we're going to have a list of our result beans, a list of type result beans. We're going to say that list of movies. So now if we go back over here, we have our results beans inner class and we're going to have a list of these objects that we can now access the data. So let's go ahead and just do something real simple here. Okay, so I just created a really simple text view here, and we're just going to display the name of the first movie. So now that we have our list of movie results, we could say our results beans. We're just going to get the first movie out of the list. So let's get a results bean object. And we're going to use our list of movies, and we're just going to say get. And we're going to get the index of it. And over here in our onCreate, we're going to capture our text view. OK, so now I have an instance of my text view here. And we're going to say, we're going to set the results of my text view. Set the text. We're going to use our first movie. And we're going to say, get the title. All right. So what happens is this call gets enqueued, and we pass it a new callback. And inside the callback, we get on response. And this is what happens if we get a successful call. It'll give us back a response of type movie results. Then we have to get the body of that. And then this is going to be the root element. And now we want the list of details inside that. So we use get results. And then we can finally access each of the movies that we want. And we're setting the text view here. And on failure is called if something goes wrong. And for whatever reason, the network call is unsuccessful. So let's go ahead and test out our app, and hopefully this works. OK, so it seems to be a couple of problems. I forgot something that was real simple. And we have to go into our Android manifest and, of course, add the permission to use the internet. Let's go ahead and give it a try again. And as you can see, the first thing that pops up is the beauty and the beast. So we have successfully in this video created an interface that uses retrofit. We have built a retrofit object here in our main activity. We created an instance of our interface by using our retrofit create and passing it in. We created a call which is going to execute asynchronously and that way it stays off the main UI thread. We used our enqueue passing in a callback and parsing the results here in our on response method. So I hope this was helpful and you learned something from it. I know I was definitely confused with the movie results or the object that goes here inside the call and I hope I cleared it up a little bit for you. If you'd like, go ahead and check out my blog at www.androidsyndicate.com. 
please leave a comment, rate, and subscribe. It helps me out greatly, and stay tuned for the next video.